One of the very important investment products available to taxpayers is annuities. There are different types of annuities available out there with different tax implications and it is important that tax practitioners understand the differences. Probably the simplest annuity out there is a voluntary annuity which is bought on a fixed term basis. In other words, you buy the annuity for a 5 or 10 year period and it works like this. You give the financial institution a lump sum of money and they then pay you back a regular income for a certain period until the lump sum and the interest is paid off. It works like a loan in reverse. You give the institution a lump sum and they pay it back to you over a certain term or period. The repayment amount is a fixed amount for the term of the annuity. Part of the repayment amount is repayment of capital and part of the repayment is called interest although it is not really interest and does not qualify for the exempt portion of interest earned from a normal bank investment. If you buy an annuity like this with an amount of 100,000 Rand for example for a fixed term of 5 years then the capital portion of 100,000 Rand you give the institution will be paid back to you over 60 months. This repayment of capital will be a 100,000 divided by 60 months which comes to 1,667 Rand per month every month shown on the RT3 as code 3612 and is non-taxable as it is your own money they are paying back to you. Depending on the annuity rate and how the annuity was structured at the time when the annuity was purchased, an additional RT3 code 3611 amount per month will be paid to you and this would be what is commonly called the interest portion. This code 3611 amount is fully taxable. After the term of the annuity, all the capital and interest will have been paid to you and the annuity ceases. Note that these fixed term annuities may be structured to pay monthly or annually in advance or in arrears. SAS will not allow you to use your two thirds of the amount in your retirement fund to buy a term annuity like this to provide income in lieu of a monthly pension. When you retire from a pension fund and or when you mature a retirement annuity policy then you may take one third of your amount in the fund as a lump sum and the other two thirds must be used to buy an annuity to give you a monthly pension. The income from this annuity is fully taxable. You do not have to take the one third lump sum. You can decide to convert the entire amount you have in the fund to an annuity to give you more monthly pension. I want you to think about a case where a taxpayer paid contributions to a retirement fund and the contributions exceeded the legislation limits for the portion of contributions that could be claimed as a deduction when the contributions were made. The portion of contributions that could not be claimed over the years will be recorded by SOS. You are allowed to deduct the sum of these excess amounts from the one third lump sum before the tiered tax tables are applied to determine what tax, if any, is due on the one third lump sum that you take. That is all well and good, but what about the taxpayers who elect not to take the one third as a lump sum and prefer to convert their entire amount in the pension or RA fund to an annuity? Do they then lose out if they have accumulated excess of contributions they could not claim as a deduction when the contributions were originally made? In cases like this, the brought forward contribution amounts not claimed in the past will be paid out as non-taxable annuity income. If, for example, you accumulated 80,000 Rand contributions in excess of the limits you were allowed to claim when the contributions were made, then that 80,000 Rand will be paid out to you as non-taxable annuity income. For example, if you get 10,000 Rand a month or 120,000 per year income from your annuity, then the RT3 should show taxable annual annuity income of 40,000 Rand and non-taxable annual annuity income of 80,000 Rand. These rules fall under Section 10C of the Act. 
in the case of a taxpayer with several lump sums and several annuities, then the non-taxable portion is accumulative between the lump sums and the annuities and applied on a first come first served basis. The two-thirds portion of the pension or RA value is often placed into a living annuity which is so called because although there are no guarantees, it is supposed to provide an income virtually for life. The income may not be all that great for the entire period if income requirements are extravagant or if growth rates are poor, but it is supposed to always provide some income in theory. Let me explain. The living annuity allows a maximum of 17.5% of capital to be paid out as income and this helps prevent the capital being depleted too rapidly. When the remaining capital drops to between 75,000 Rand and 50,000 Rand, then the annuity fund may pay out the entire amount as the costs of administering the remaining capital will exceed any growth you get. Maybe the best way to explain the cash flow would be by using one of the many living annuity calculators for Windows or even one of the free apps for mobile devices available out there. This living annuity calculator allows us to set up costs and commissions if we click on the costs button. We've asked for no initial commission we have a nominal 300 Rand setup or initial admin fees, 1% annual portfolio management fee, annual dividend of 1%, and we've entered a trial commission of 1%, and we've set the 17.5% maximum of portfolio value allowed as income. In this example, the amount we have placed or invested in the living annuity is 2 million rand. We've entered a growth rate of 8% per annum. We will draw 10,000 rand per month to start with and escalate the 10,000 rand income at 5% per annum. The thing to remember here is that the income we receive is fully taxable as normal pension income. If we click on the amortization button, this table shows the year-by-year -year progression of our total portfolio value, the monthly income amount drawn, and the percentage change in our income. We asked for 5% escalation. However, we can see that our portfolio capital does start dropping as the monthly amount we draw increases by 5% every year. In the beginning, the 10,000 Rand a month or 120,000 Rand per year income we drew is about 6% of our capital. But escalate that income by 5% a year and the annual income soon becomes more than 8% of our capital. This means that our capital grows at 8% but we take out more than 8% as income, so we have a net loss of capital. If we scroll down to about year 14 or 15, with our 5% annual income escalation, in year 14 we are drawing 18,856 Rand a month, or 226,272 Rand a year, which is 15.75 of our portfolio capital at this stage. This is still less than the 17.5% allowed by law, so we are still okay. But between year 15 and 16, we can see a problem developing. The reason is obvious, as our portfolio is only growing at 8% per annum, and we have now reached the 17.5% limit of portfolio value we can take as income. This means that we have to accept that our income will start dropping at about year 16 in this example. As the portfolio continues to grow at 8% and we continue to take out 17.5%, the percentage drop in our income increases. Let's scroll down to the end. We can see that after 41 years, our income is 67% of what it was in year 40. The rules as they are today mean that in this case, the annuity would be cancelled in about year 36 or 37 and the remaining capital would be paid out. 
The amount of this remaining capital is dependent on circumstances surrounding the annuity and could be between 50,000 and 75,000 rand. The remaining capital paid out would be taxable as normal income at normal rates. Using the figures in this particular example, I ask you to note the huge percentage decrease in income available from one year to the next at this late stage. What can we do to improve the situation? Well, if we take less income at any stage, it should allow the capital to recover to a degree and then more capital means more income can be drawn. What if we reduce our initial income drawn from 10,000 Rand a month to 7,500 Rand a month? We can see that the income we need escalating at 5% we can now take for 24 years before we are forced to take a reduction in income. Reducing the annual escalation factor on our income drawn will also help. Please note that the figures produced by the calculator are assuming that all costs and growth rates etc. will stay the same for the period. We all know that this is not going to happen. For example, growth rates may decrease for a few years and they may also increase for a few years during a different period of the annuity. So all we can go on are the figures for current growth rates etc. at this time. The calculator at least gives us an invaluable guide as to how long the annuity may continue to pay a required inflation-linked income with all other factors being equal. The example we've just looked at showed a case where 2 million rand was placed into a living annuity. All the income received is taxable at normal rates under normal circumstances. However, if Section 10C had applied to any of the annuity income, then only some of the income paid out would have been taxable and some of the income would have been tax-free. The important thing here is that the RT3 should show the taxable annuity income as code 3610 or even as code 3603 and any tax-free annuity income as per section 10C should be shown as code 3602 or even code 3604 for the tax year.